It is a cell that was built for some female captives that British wanted to rape, but the women refused. Europeans never brought their wives to Africa because of malaria. Malaria killed them to the extent that they named the coast of West Africa the white man's grave. I love that name. So only men came. But the men who were here were adults, so they couldn't stay alone for a longer time. With that woman. So they abused the African women sexually. But sometimes, if they wanted to do that, some of the African women would be fighting with them. Those who resisted were brought here. They had a job. They would be here sometimes a week for punishment. They were doing that for others to see so that tomorrow, when they get closer to you, you would not fight again. That's what we see there was their toilet given to them. They pass food and water through this place once in a day, sometimes twice. So we are not grateful for this very great. Yeah. Yeah. Shall we come here, please? Hello, let's come in here, because we will be going out again very soon. Now, women were 300. So, 150 here, 150 in there. And do you know why women were enslaved? Do you know why? Because I told they were taken to go and work for Europeans, because of the new, when the new world was discovered. So we talk of hard labor. I think should have been men. And women were taken to go and breed, to go and give birth, so that they get more people. So when the women got there, they did production and reproduction. And they were treated like the men. They go to the toilet here. They will urinate. At the end of every month, women pass their menstruations in these dungeons. They did not allow them to clean their teeth. They did not bath. There was no sanitary pad for three months. But upon all this humiliation, Europeans still raped some yes. of the African women. Yes. So any time they wanted to do that, they were at the top. They would come from their rooms upstairs. They would open this or that. They would look through and they would select a woman to their bedroom to, their, uh, to go and rape. If you refuse, they will punish you in that particular cell. Some of them became pregnant in those days. So when we're ready to go with them, pregnant Africans were not taken away. They freed them from the castle. They built houses for them in Cape Coast Town. They kept them there. They gave them food, clothing, everything. When they gave birth, sometimes they would free the mother with the child. Or after giving birth, they would take care of the mother and the baby up to around 10 or more years. And they go and take the light skin maybe from the mother. They bring the mother here again as a slave. Mm. 
and they gave birth to mulattoes or light skinned children. And Europeans were proud giving names to them. That is how come along the coast of Ghana today, especially where Europeans settled, we have light skinned people and most of the Ghanaians having European last names such as Van Dyke, Van der Poy, Van Vika, Van der Poy. Did you say Van der Poy? Yeah, Van der Poy. Van der Poy is Dutch. Van Dyke, Van der Poy, Da Costa, De Souza, Johnson, Thompson, Ferguson, Jackson, Blanson, Lawson, Brown, Bruce, Hughes, Taylor, Anderson, Lawson, Kofison, Kwamison, all the same sentences. These are names for Europeans. Before Europeans came, we never had these names. They were typical African names, which they could not pronounce, and they corrupted most of them. Any question? Are any of the women who have gave birth and were you know, cared for elsewhere, were they ever able to leave? You said they were free. Were they able to leave? Yes. Did any of them go back to... No, to they, they didn't go back. Because where they came from, if we decide to go back, there was they were using one single footpath from the north to the south. So if you try to go back, you'll be tempted to you'll be captured again. So, so how can I get rid of the slave name that I got on me? Come again. How can I get rid of the slave name? This is a very difficult one. But you can get rid of that by coming to Africa and adapting a, a, a tribe so that you get a tribal name. Let me tell you something. One of the secrets which, is, which has made uh, this thing very difficult for the Africans across uh, in the diaspora, for them not to trace or locate their tribes in Africa are the names that they changed for them. Because in Africa, our last names are tribal names and therefore identification. So if they mention my last name in Ghana, the native Ghanaian will know the tribe where I am from. Right. If they mention last name, we know. So that is for identification. So if they had not changed their names for them, and they maintain their original last names, everybody in the diaspora will come back and trace their roots. They mention somebody from Nigeria, a Yoruba man, Igbo, Dagomba, we know this is for this. This name is for these people. This name is for these people. That is a secret. So you can decide to come to Ghana or any Africa to adopt a tribe and you get the name. And you get rid of the name. <coughs> DNA, it is becoming complex and difficult. Because look, from the way they were captured, from different, different backgrounds, different, different tribes, and they put them together and they intermarry themselves. So you might be from. Ghana from maybe Akan, Cameroon, and marry somebody from Ghana or Gambia. Your children will also go and marry from different places. Your children are children like that. So look, the line is missing. So I, it is difficult. These white people and DNA scams. And so I don't think the DNA is the best way because, uh, and look, when they got to the plantations, when women give birth, I believe you know those ones, you will not be allowed to stay with your child forever. You, you, you start to be separated from you to a different place. They'll bring someone else to where you are. So today, you might be in New York going to marry somebody from Maryland or Chicago or whatever. Maybe the person you're going to marry today might be your direct descendant that was separated from you some 100, 200 years ago. You see the mathematics. I just, I just wanted to say that it's not, I just wanted to add that it's not as difficult as we think. Because in all of the cells in our bodies, we have something called mitochondrial DNA, which is passed down from mother to daughter. So someone can examine your empty DNA, your mitochondrial DNA sequence, to trace your maternal lineage to pinpoint the ethnicity. Also, men carry a Y chromosome. That Y chromosome is passed from father to son. Okay. And so you can trace your paternal lineage okay. through the Y chromosome. So if regardless of who you intermarry or co-create with, 
Your mtDNA, that doesn't change. Your Y chromosome doesn't change because it is directly inherited from your ancestors. So when you want to trace your lineage, you need to trace it with your matrilineal okay. line, your, your maternal lineage through your mtDNA, or your paternal lineage through your Y chromosome, which doesn't change okay. regardless is it, of is, is it 100%? Or is it about 80-90%? No, no, no. You're talking about ancestral composition. Okay. I'm talking about mtDNA, which is in every cell of your body and Y chromosome. Okay. So it's the 23rd chromosome okay. that's in your body. We had 46, 23 from our father, 23 from our mother. Okay. The 23 chromosome determines your sex. And you can trace your ancestral lineage based on the 23rd chromosome. Okay. That's right. There's a way to know. From America, from but as far as the, but as far as the villages and the community, it's not. It's still going to be complex situation. Yeah, it's going to be complex. Well, no, you've got African ancestry. They trace it right to a, a tribe. They, okay, they, yeah, they trace it right to a tribe.